huge game announcements, and of course, leaks that indicate a new Valve console may be announced soon. And I'm going to tell you why I'm a little bit concerned about it. Let's get into it. Let's kick things off with three anticipated games that came out yesterday and one that released today. The one that came out today is none other than Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, which makes its Steam debut just six months after being released to the Epic Games Store. The fact that this was only a six month exclusive deal is a bit of a welcome surprise. And no, I'm not mad that I bought this during the Epic sale and it's now available on Steam. I'm not owned, I'm not owned. <laughs> Seriously, this is awesome. And it actually marks the first time that a game is deck verified prior to its actual release. That's pretty great. Of course, there's also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, and boy was I waiting for that one. My kids recently got into the modern TMNT animated series via Netflix, so I thought this would be a good way to indoctrinate, I mean, bond with them. So we played some three-player local co-op, and it was a blast. Mind you, I used the Steam Deck dock to the big screen, we paired a DualShock, a DualSense, and a Steam controller, and went to town. I did have issues connecting my Switch Pro controllers, I don't know what was going on. Anyway, the developers at Tribute really nailed the nostalgia with this one. Can't can't wait to play some more sets with the kiddos. It was so much fun to see this genre through their fresh eyes. I'm over here pointing out traps and they're like whoop de doo what does this so-hurl do? Anyway, as an aside, this game has a native Linux port from the one and only Ethan Lee who is responsible for dozens of awesome ports of indie games, so it's no surprise that this was deck verified on day one. Another game that was verified on day one was Neon White. I think this game surprised a lot of people recently and honestly it surprised me too. I mean, I already love Annapurna and I already love time trial FPS games, so all in all, I knew that this game was for me. Nonetheless, I was still surprised. This game is really my type of jam, y'all. Even the quirky style. It reminds me of Persona, or perhaps more specifically, Catherine. It's got the Japanese demon mythology combined with really upbeat music and surreal environments. I'm really impressed by how it plays so far, and I can't wait to really sink my teeth into this one. There is a big problem though, it doesn't properly support mixed input, meaning the ability to use the mouse for aiming and the control pad for everything else. So I have to pick my poison. Either I use the control pad controls for everything, which makes for a subpar trackpad aiming, or I use keyboard and mouse controls for everything and I lose the very helpful controller prompts. So far I've chosen the former, the game hasn't ramped up in difficulty and I can still get an ace trophy with the more basic controls, so I'm good to go for now. And lastly on this list is Red Out 2. This is a long awaited sequel and it received a short delay. I'm a huge fan of anti-grav racers and especially F-Zero GX. In that way, I really like the Red Out series for the way it incorporates strafing, similar to that F-Zero GX mechanic. That said, Red Out 2 isn't quite doing it for me just yet like the original was. Moreover, this has a Steam Deck problem as well. It's a really demanding game if you want to run at 60 FPS. Even if I set the preset to low, and set the rendering resolution to 80%, it still struggles to catch 50 FPS on some tracks. The thing is you can get a steady 30 or even 40 FPS, no problem, so yeah, I went back to 100% resolution and stuck to 40 FPS. It's actually smooth and responsive at that profile, but this is one of the few games I would really love to run at 60 FPS. In any case, that's a pretty amazing list for the week. Final Fantasy VII, Shredder's Revenge, Neon White, and Red Out 2. Hell yeah! Which of these games are you going to pick up? Let me know in the comments. In addition to these four releases, there were some huge game announcements as of late. The news of the FF7 remake coming to Steam was part of the 25th anniversary stream for FF7 and that included announcements for a Crisis Core remaster and a second entry in the remake titled Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The former should be out later this year and the latter should be out next winter. That gives me plenty of time to finish Remake Integrate. Of course, that's not the only big RPG coming to Steam. We also have Persona 3 and Persona 5 Royal. Between these two and Soul Hackers 2, it kind of seems like Atlas is finally showing the PC crew some love. And there's one more RPG. It looks like the rumors of a Tactics Ogre remaster are real. A PlayStation Store listing popped up for the title Tactics Ogre Reborn with this box art. There aren't any more details, but I'm curious to see how this turns out. On the Sony front, there is a Steam page for Spider-Man, and since my last news video, The Last of Us got announced, and here's the thing, Sony are testing me with this one. I said I was going to buy every Sony port to PC to support these decisions, and The Last of Us is a no-brainer, but why are they remaking this? We don't need a PS3 version, and a PS4 version, and a PS5 version. Normally that's something I would choose not to buy out of principle, but this is the first time it's coming to PC, so I'll go ahead and pick it up. 
Finally, there's a leak for Crash 4, it's about time. Someone said it's about time they port it, and yeah, bravo. Anyway, there's a SteamDB listing that according to SteamDB staff, looks suspiciously like Crash 4. This could be significant because it could once again be signaling the eventual death of another launcher, this time Battle.net. This is one to keep our eyes on. So not only was this a big week for game releases and game announcements, but it's also a big week for game demos. Right now the Steam Next Fest is going on. It's a Steam event where developers of upcoming games get a chance to showcase their projects and it's usually packed with great demos. This is no exception. I downloaded like 40 demos to my Steam Deck. To be fair, I've only played like five of them so far, but who cares? The important thing is that I downloaded the demos and added the games to my wish list. obviously. You know what's funny? Everyone has something to say about how bad Sonic Frontier seems to be, and to be fair, I have no idea if it's going to be a good game or a bad game. I have no clue. I haven't played it. But you know what I have played? The demo for Spark the Electric Jester 3. Are you kidding me? With the exception of a couple Sonic Adventure games and maybe Sonic Colors, Sega would have us nearly convinced that it's impossible to make a good 3D Sonic game. But then the devs of Spark 3 are here like, let me just show you how this is done. I'm also loving the demos for retro-inspired shooters, Celico is built on a modified Doom engine, and it really lives up to the hype so far. The interactivity and dialogue make it feel like a modern build engine style game, and even more so than the recent Ion Fury. Fashion Police Squad knows what vibe it wants to go for, and it nails it. You go around shooting civilians with style. I think you misheard that. You go around using weapons like a sewing machine to enhance the drip of unwitting civilians. This rocks. And Trepang 2 doesn't look retro in the least, but it gives super strong fear vibes. It's a really good time, so check it out. That said, I'm not just bringing up NextFest for the demos, which are incredibly awesome. I'm also mentioning it because this subject pertains to potential new hardware from Valve and an announcement of that hardware perhaps being sooner than we might expect. And to be honest, I'm a little selfishly concerned if that's the case. So all of this news is thanks to YouTuber Sadly It's Bradley, who does excellent work when it comes to data mining and investigating rumored VR devices. This time he's responsible for bringing us the details of a Steam VR leak. I'm using air quotes around leak because it seems possible, maybe even likely, that Valve uses their code pushes as a sort of guerrilla marketing tactic, knowing full well that people like Brad and Tyler McVicker will uncover the goodies within. In any case, this leak gives a ton, and I mean a ton of info around the rumored Valve Deckard. The Deckard is the next generation of VR that Valve have been working on, and it appears to be a wireless headset that can pair to a PC and may even be able to function as a standalone headset by attaching an additional module with a chip that is perhaps similar to what is inside the Steam Deck. So in a sense, it could be its own standalone console. One of the things that's interesting here is the settings menu that looks an awful lot like the Steam Deck settings menu. There's even an OS channel which you may have seen on the Steam Deck. That kind of implies that this device would have its own operating system. At any rate, I'm going to mostly skip over the meat and potatoes of the leak because Brad covers it in depth and you should go watch his video. But at the end of the video, he speculates about how far we are from this thing being announced. He first cites the fact that when something similar to this leak happened with regard to the Steam Deck, it was only a month or two before the Steam Deck was actually announced by Valve. Do you all remember rumors of a Steam Pal? Well, that was the code name, and it didn't take long after we learned of the Steam Pal in late May to when it was officially announced in mid-July. The month of July brings me to the next piece of evidence supporting Brad's speculation. There was a survival-themed Steam Festival planned for July, but Valve pushed that festival and instead decided to run their VR Fest in July. Could it be that the VR Fest coincides with an announcement of new VR hardware? Brad rightfully warns us not to get our hopes up, but yeah, this is very interesting news for sure. So here's why I'm a little concerned, and I admit that my concern is biased and selfish, but hey, at least I have the awareness to say so. Nevertheless, Valve is a big boy company, and they know what they're doing, but the Steam Deck feels like it's barely getting its feet off the ground, and I'd hate to see their focus split on more hardware. And not just their focus, but also their warehouse space, shipment allocations, and maybe even supply. If Valve do make this a standalone headset of some sort, they're likely to use an AMD chip that's similar or the same to what they're using in the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck, which is reserved until who knows when. Valve likely has over a million Steam Deck reservations and has shipped about a quarter million so far. 
But like I said, I'm aware that my concern is unfounded and I'm getting way ahead of myself. There's not even an announcement yet and Valve have shown serious dedication to the deck. And to be honest, I'm absolutely excited about a new VR revision and can't wait to see what's in store. Hopefully we hear more very soon. By the way, what new Valve hardware would you like to see? I'd love to see a new Steam controller that has something closer to Steam Deck controls myself. With that, let's talk about some Steam Deck updates. It's actually been a very busy week on that front. Valve has released Proton 7.0.3. If you've been keeping up with Proton Experimental, then you know the deal here. There are fixes for a number of games, but notably Deathloop no longer crashes out of a long suspend. The new FF14 online launcher now works. Street Fighter V gets better frame rate during online matches, and V Rising now works. That's a big deal. Heroic Game Launcher also has a really awesome UI update coming. This is available to test right now in the beta channel, but I'll wait until it's on the main channel before making a full video on this. If you're unaware, Heroic is a way to install and configure Epic and GOG games on Linux machines. The new UI is a lot easier to navigate. It unifies your library across both stores, and in doing so, they added a filter if you still want to narrow by store. It's also easier to see when games are being installed. Honestly, there are a bunch of small quality of life improvements that make this tool a lot easier to use, so I'm excited to see this get tested and come to the main Discover store. ME Deck has also received a huge update. It's now on version 0.17.5. This is another one that I'll probably make a full video for. One of the biggest improvements is that they are now using the Yuzu app image as opposed to the flat pack. This is more up to date and brings some major compatibility improvements. For example, Kirby now runs notably smoother. Also, the storage folder for RPCS3, Yuzu, and Zemu now all store the data on the SD card. That's incredibly helpful and is a relief on the hard drive. And there are a bunch of updates to input, including an update to the Citro profile that will close the emulator only after a long press of R5 rather than a regular press. This is to help prevent an accidental close. Here's something very specific to content creators. If you want to capture Steam Deck footage using an Elgato capture card, well, Elgato has now improved their edit files for this use case. You can now select Steam Deck friendly resolutions in the 4K capture utility, including 800p. This is something I struggled with early on when recording the direct capture from the deck. Thankfully, someone helped me find a workaround, but now it should work for everybody. Finally, with regard to Steam Deck updates, there is a new APU driver for Windows. Not many details were given here, just that this fixes some regression issues with Halo Infinite and other titles. So that's cool. Lastly for today is the community spotlight. A few people have been successful in making a dual screen Steam Deck, a double decker if you will. The two projects I've seen on Reddit look awesome. One is by FickleAnimal2192, who made the Steam Shade and is also working on a cool magnetic cover for the Steam Deck. The other one is by Pygoose, who has been showing off a number of dual screen games on this creation. This sort of stuff is really fun and the Steam Deck community is really the best. Hey, so if you enjoyed this video, then hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss another Steam Deck news roundup. In case you missed it, I dropped an emulation mega guide. I worked my ass off for that one, so go check it out. Deck gang out. Goodbye.